Before we get into today's case, I want to remind you that my new merch shop is up and running. Stranger Label is full of exclusive and high-quality items, including my personal favorite, the Do Not Cross mug that I've been drinking from every single morning since I got it. Every single purchase will help support the channel, and that truly means the world. So head to StrangerLabel.com and get whatever you want while supplies last. And now, let's get into today's case. That's why you're, you, you know, you're charged with a grand theft auto. And I'm not trying to trick you, I'm not trying to fool you. You're opening up to me and I'm opening up to you, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the reason you're charged with that. Tonight, we're following new developments in the disappearance of Nassau County woman Jolene Cummings. An arrest, we know, has now been made. Now authorities are trying to track down exactly where Kimberly Kessler was in the previous months. They say that she's been living a double life. 50-year-old Kimberly Kessler disappeared from Butler, Pennsylvania in 2004. Eight years later, her mother reported her missing to Pennsylvania State Police. In 2013, Kessler made her way to the First Coast using a fake name and a fake social security number. Kessler went by Jennifer Seibert, which according to an online database matches the name of a woman buried in the same area she disappeared from. We confirmed she worked at Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy in Jacksonville from September to April of 2014. During her time in Jacksonville, police discovered Kessler's fake identity and she was wanted by police on grand theft auto charges. Well, last week, the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office arrested her and she was booked into the Nassau County Jail May 19th. This video contains the interview of Kimberly Kessler, who was suspected in the death of Jolene Cummings. On May 13th, 2018, 34-year-old Jolene Cummings was supposed to meet her ex-husband to pick up her three children. She never arrived. The next day, her mother reported her as missing. She had last been seen on the 12th by one of her coworkers at Tangles Hair Salon. On May 16th, people discovered Cummings' vehicle abandoned in a Home Depot parking lot. Security footage was examined, and while they expected to see Cummings exiting her car, they were surprised to recognize the co-worker that had last seen her, Jennifer Seibert. The case became stranger when they uncovered the fact that Jennifer Seibert was actually Kimberly Kessler. Kessler had been reported missing by her mother in 2012, although she had already been missing for eight years. Piecing together her movements, police found that Kessler had 18 aliases and lived in 33 cities across 14 states. Further discoveries sparked by online discussions revealed that Kessler had been using aliases for years before her disappearance. And the question was raised whether or not Cummings was just one in a long line of victims. Are you sleeping? No, not at all. Okay. I am. I am. <laughs> I'm sleeping. My name's Wayne, this is Charlie. Hey, you got it. We want to talk to you for a few minutes. Well, what name do you want me to, to call you? Because I was talking to the detective that drove you up and he said I might have been calling you by the wrong name. It's funny that St. John's didn't tell you. When you run, run my fingerprints through, they come mm -hmm. up as Kimberly Lee Kessler. Um, okay. I was born in May of 1968, May 9th. I am 50 years old. I've been running from the FBI for over 25 years. I've been living under this particular alias since 1999, so not quite 1999, this is 18, yeah, about 19 years, um, and that's about it. So I would prefer to be called Kim. Okay, okay. But, okay I just want to make sure I'm, that I'm calling you uh, by your right name. But if you run them through, I mean, the last time I got picked up was back in 1999, and. I bonded out, and it took them, I don't remember, it was a couple of weeks, I don't know if it was two and a half weeks or three and a half weeks before they actually, you know, matched them matched up. Matched them up. Yeah, it didn't like, but that was 1999, so maybe it was a little bit slower then. Okay. But I don't know, there's like lots of people on the face of the planet, so maybe it still takes time. I'm not sure. And, and it may be too that you, since you've had this alias for, for so long, you know, it probably, you, you've probably done a lot of stuff since that time, and so you've actually kind of got a, you know, you've got a history under that name, so it probably shows up in different databases and stuff like that. And that's just a guess, and maybe, maybe that's why it's, it's happening like that. Oh, no, fingerprints are fingerprints. Fingerprints are fingerprints, and I agree. <laughs> like, but, but I, have I, a, I uh, didn't erase them with acid, so <laughs> they are the same. And, and, just and, saying. And, and I agree with you, but I haven't, I haven't run your fingerprints. And if St. John's did, they, they failed to, to notify us that, you know, uh, 
of the different names. So I apologize perhaps, for perhaps that. Perhaps they just thought I was a, you know, a nut job, so they just right. ignored me. But it, it will eventually come out, so. Kessler is oddly confident and seems proud that she has been on the run for so long. It doesn't even deflate her when she learns that no one has really noticed until now. Call you Kim. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> you know, you know Kim, we'll call you yeah, my Kim. mom's name, she's Connie Kessler. She's up in Butler, Pennsylvania. I have a brother, Robert Charles Kessler, a sister, Sarah. Sarah Jacqueline Halsey Kessler. Excuse me, Kessler Halsey. Halsey's from there. Does your family know you? Or you, don't, or you don't want your family? I haven't. No, that's fine. I haven't talked to them in a while. Um, I have cousins and all that. All my people are do you not there. Want, do you not want to spend time with them anymore? Or just... um, yeah, I'd like to. I'm, I'm ready to go back to being myself. I spent, you know, about 25 years running from the FBI and thought I could build, like, a life for myself, and I've done nothing. I've been living in, I mean, I've been trying. I've been living in my car for the last over two years. Okay. I'm not getting, it's not getting any better. Okay. I, I, would, I, would like to, I would like to know, you know, and, and I'm not the FBI, I'm not a federal law enforcement agent or anything like that, but, you know, I kind of like to hear the, the background of, of why, you know, for pull the last 25 years. Pull it all you, up. Pull it up on the computer. Pull my name up. Pull okay. it up. Kimberly Kessler. And I'll you should be able to pull that up. What, what I'll do It'll is be I, if, you'll give, if, you'll, if, if, if you'll give me a minute, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll step outside and my crime analyst is actually here. And I'll give her that information and let her and let her uh, work on that. Yeah, Kimberly Lee Kessler. Okay. Kind of a silly middle name, isn't it? It's like my mom stuttered. I'm just <laughs> saying, I never really cared for it. What's the, the, her name? Actually, she has two birth certificates, but only one social security card. And her her father named her Constance Lee, like constantly. Mm -hmm. Her mother hated it. Her mom so hated it. had to explain that, I wouldn't have got it. Her you mother, my it. granny, flipped over that. So <laughs> my grandfather named her Constance Lee Schmidt, is her maiden name. And then my grandmother named her, oh no, her name's going to be Constance Roberta Schmidt. So she, that's her maiden name, but it's Constance Schmidt Kessler. So do you plan on going back and reunite with your family, or you have decided, or what? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just time. I'm 50 years made? old. I am 50. And I'm oh, just, guess what, uh, you know, it doesn't so, matter. Yeah, so. Looks are deceiving, obviously. Some people look young, some people look whatever. It doesn't even you matter. Have children? I do. I have yeah. a son. He is in North Carolina with his father. Um, mm -hmm. That's what got me going, running again in 1999. Child Protective Services snatched him while I was at work from the babysitter, mm -hmm. and that really sent me over the edge. So, um, Thankfully, his father got him. I, he told me that the judge told him, or that the judge said to CPS, why won't you give this man his son? Like, why are you fighting against him? And the judge made him get our son. And so thankfully, my son is 20 years old now. Um, I haven't seen him since he was 14 months old. I'm very grateful that his father got to raise him. I did not want him in foster care. It scared me to death. I couldn't even understand why they, were, why they took him. So that set me on my last 19 year run. He was, uh, he, he was born in 1998. My son is Evan Everett Brooke, and I was under the name Christina Brooke at the time. Yeah, the names go on, don't they? Wow. And, um, yep, 25 years. I mentioned I've been running from the FBI. They'll have a list of everything. Everything. So, um... How long have you been cutting hair? <sighs> I've been cutting hair um, since I was a kid, but I actually got into the, like, professional with a license, like... Four years ago. I guess that works well if you're moving moving around a lot. I guess it's no. You can wait tables or whatever. I have driven tractor and trailer, which I did in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, did I mention I'm one in Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Arizona? So mm -hmm. yeah. I also have a real estate license in Arizona. It goes <laughs> on and on. I didn't really sell anything though. Here's the thing. It's just I guess it requires like I just thought that okay. So my grandparents on my father's side of the family made a lot of money. In real estate or? No. <laughs> no. Um, actually, estate sales. Uh, lots and lots and lots of money. Like, unbelievable amounts. And I just thought to myself, I'm going to make money. Well, no. It requires, like, a special blessing from God. It also requires help. What I noticed in the last 25 years of being on my own, I, especially after my son was taken, I didn't let anybody get really too close to me. I did get into abusive relationships. That was foolish. And then I really kept everybody at arm's length, but never really let too many people get close to me. It is virtually impossible to take care of oneself by yourself. You, you know, can't do it's, it. It's, it's funny because... You, you gotta know, have somebody. You gotta have a wife or you gotta have people. You can't do it by yourself. 
So it's amazing though that you you know for twenty five. I mean, it's amazing to me that, that you know because you, you always hear about people going, oh my gosh, you know, I just want to start over. I just want to you know, I just want to be somebody else. I just want a whole new identity. No, and, but, but then if you ever really look into it, I mean, it's it's complicated. It's complicated. It's, it's very stuff. complicated. It's very complicated. So. The detectives play to Kessler's vanity by emphasizing how hard it is to completely start over in a new life. Kessler basks in the attention and overshares personal information. Right. Cerna takes a sip of water, replaces the cap, and then without a pause, he removes the gun from his pants and raises it to his left temple. There is no hesitation. So, um, what, yeah. what, is, what is your what is your your son? Now, were you married to the guy that you had? To, no. Okay. No. So, do, do they know that you're? I mean, where, where did they? Think they know you I'm are? running. They oh, know okay. I'm running. So, okay. He's probably angry about it. I gave him before I left. <laughs> all I had to give him was an old Volkswagen Bug that I had. I was driving this. It was nice. Like they what had a nice. Have? The year Bug. Mm -hmm. It was like a. I don't know. It's all put together. So I think it was on the title, maybe a '68 or something like that. It had a bus engine in it, a mm -hmm. 1776 dual Delardo car. Blah blah blah, whatever. But it was nice, like cute or whatever, but shiny. And now the '68s was that, was that a split window? I don't split remember. All I remember was blue, we, we and, I, to, and I could never do any work on it myself at all. Like I was, nothing. I couldn't even change the oil. Like it complicated. It was. Too, they're, they're different. It's just got that air cooled engine, you know. And quarter turn. What? I never understood yeah. it. We used to when I was in high school. Back when bugs are kind of rare now. You don't see them. And they're actually, they're you know, um, but, but back then. Well, this was this bug around. was from Arizona. That's yeah. where. So it was preserved. So it was preserved. So it didn't have a, any, you know, no damage to the soil or rust. Because we used to uh, make what they call the Baja Beach. Oh, yeah, those are cute with the big fat tires on you know, the back. I grew up near the ocean, you know, we had the big tires on and everything. Yeah, so. put the little, like, exhaust straight up in the air. Exactly, really. exactly. <laughs> or maybe bend it over in case it rains so it doesn't get out. Kind of put a can on it. Put yeah, I've seen that, that too. Stinker pipe, that's what they call them. That's one of my uh, first relationships in Arizona. He was actually, he robbed banks. And <laughs> I met him. I was working, I was working as a... Um, topless dancer and that was before my truck driving debut <laughs> so um and i did that just for a little while just um i love to dance and i just it i don't know i i was young and you know it, it didn't bother me but then it bothered me i'm like what am i you know it like starts to wear on you like you start to feel like dirty and i'm like man i can't do this anymore but um, so I met him at a at a topless bar in Phoenix, <laughs> and um, just started going out with him and whatever. And, and um, he was with me whenever he called somebody and they said the FBI is looking for you. And he's like, Oh my god! And then he tells me everything. Oh, I robbed these banks. So I'm like, You what? <laughs> like, like wow. here's me. Where's the money? <laughs> so, so he had no money, and I hid him in my apartment. And that was like kind of almost the beginning. Are you going to write a book one day? I don't even know if anyone believes me. But the FBI has that. a record, so you know it's true, okay? <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> it sounds like a bunch of crap. Look it up. They have a record, it's true. You've got, you got an interesting story. That's true. Right. <laughs> but he had a, where I was going with that, he had a Baja bug. <laughs> so. Wow. So was that, and you said that was when it all first started. Is that when you kind of first went on the run? No, I had two IDs at the time. I had myself and then my other ID, and um, that's yeah. I kind of started. I got my real estate license, and then that's when it started because I used my other ID and I got printed. Mm -hmm. And I had been printed once before. What was I printed once before for? I don't know. Pull it up. It's kind of like just pull it up. Okay. Well, you've done pretty good being around for you know, twenty five years. Long. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's tiring. I'm fifty, wow. man. <laughs> it's got. It's got to be tiring though. You know, I, it's like where's your favorite place at? Uh, yeah, obviously, you travel around a lot. I travel a little bit. Um, hmm. I don't know. See, like I was always like looking for that heaven on earth, but there is no heaven on earth. So, and there's no perfect place. Especially when you when you're by yourself, it's it's, yeah. it's got to be tough to uh, you know. Um, I mean, I'm pretty good by myself. Like I just do a lot of prayer, so I always feel like I have God with well, me. But God is. wasn't really with me because if He was, I would have made that money. God, but my granny and Pat. God's with all of us. I mean, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I believe that personally. I, you know, I really do. Well, it gives us a chance for sure. Absolutely. But he didn't Absolutely. bless me. Like, he didn't care how hard I worked. It was like minimum wage. Yeah. 
less than minimum wage. <laughs> like, well, you know, if, if well, the world has changed a lot. I mean, it's yeah. You know, I now, can't even nowadays. I mean, you can't even have God in school, which is I mean ridiculous. You can't even do what again? I'm sorry. You, you can't have God in school. You know, oh. anymore. And you know that's 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 fun ridiculous, and you know the world would be a whole lot better place if you know. I mean, well, yeah, that is would, like you know seek out the religion. That's the design of things to continually mm -hmm. get worse. I mean, that's there's no way to get to revelation without it. You know what I mean? Like, and all that has to come to pass, regrettably, not looking forward to it, hoping to dip out in some way, shape, or form in a <laughs> yeah. proper way. I want to dip out in the Absolutely. proper way, not in the Absolutely. wrong way. Because if I dip yeah. out the wrong way, it's not going to be good. So, but um, yeah, I don't look forward to it. But I mean, I'm I was watching some stuff on YouTube because I've been, you know, I told you YouTube, YouTube, but. Some of these um, people are talking about the chips being out, and some of the elderly folks they were chipping them because they had maybe Alzheimer's or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, just the things that these old people said, and, and I, it just kind of shocked me. And I'm like, I am. I, there was a time when I was younger. I'm like, I think you know, of course, mm -hmm. you know, 25 years. Ago. Kessler acts as if she is sharing stories over drinks with friends rather than being interrogated by the police. She's almost proud of her criminal history and desperately wants them to look her up to see why the FBI wants her. From the FBI, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll take the chip, then I'll go home and I'll take the chip out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to figure ways around it, right? Well, um, from what I heard on something on, on uh, YouTube, they said that there's something in that actual chip that changes or alters the DNA so that you can't take it out. <laughs> That's what makes it, because if you read Revelation, when he talks about that, you know, it doesn't say that anybody took the chip out and, like, changed their mind and got saved. It just says once they took the mark of the beast, that was it. I'm right. like, well, why can't it be? Why can't they just repent, you know? Well, it's because it actually alters their DNA, because you know they're playing with DNA big time. It alters it so a person can't. I read that Left Behind series, or I got up no, to... I never got to see that. Movie. You know, I, I never watched the movie, but I read almost the whole series, and this was several years ago. But it got to a point, because I was really, it was really great, it was on book after book, but I almost got to the point where... I forget, I got like 10 or 11 books in and they were still making more. And I got to the point where I just felt like they were just making so much money off of them. They kept oh. stretching out and making more books just to make I more never money. Read you know, I'm so sorry that like, that you know, happened. The Bible's so, the same though. Yeah, it was just like, <laughs> There's no extra books. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean it, maybe you know, the Book of Mormon. But I just felt like they got greedy because they, they were a very profitable series and they just kept making more books and just putting just fluff in there. They weren't really, Fluffy. you know, so. Um, Sorry that they took you like that. Well, you know, on their behalf. You know, yeah, but the Bible, is. like, it's the same. You read that, and it's kind of dry. I, you know, but, like, I don't know. I kind of, I compare it to a vitamin. Like, whenever you take a vitamin, we don't chew a vitamin up before we swallow it. We just right, swallow right. it. Oh, right. well, that's what I do with the Word of God. Just, just swallow it. Just what religion it. do you follow? I just... I don't know, a God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. I like the King James Version Bible. I haven't really put a name to me. I sometimes church hop, so it could be anything from Journey Church to the Methodist Church to the Baptist. It doesn't matter. Are you okay if I ask, if, if I ask my crime analyst to, to run the name? Please do. Because I'm, I'm curious. Now, now you've got me. You got my I'm glad I scratched your interest. Like, I didn't make it I'm up. Like, she, she, I didn't she, make she, it up. You're not, you're you're not, me again. You're not judging them, you're right? You're not. <laughs> Do it, please. You'll see my mug. I'll look a lot younger then. Okay. What's and, and thinner, it's, too. I won't be 200 pounds. I'll hey, be about hey, 20. Hey, <laughs> you're preaching to the choir. You know? I'm like, you, yeah, I'll you can fit in the pants and, and like, zippers, not me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, give me the full name? Kimberly. Kimberly. Mm -hmm. Stupid middle name, Lee, Lee. 9th, 1968. And that's all I remember. Um, that's, hey, you remember, you know, to, for 25, if you've had several... Well, no, I'm 50, then, and I've had, that's, that's guess, me. Guess how old I'm going to be this year? 50. Huh. Good for you. And guess what day? Make 5 -0. Nine, mine is, uh, nine, I, I, I turned 5 and, uh, well, you, you just had, you just had a birthday. I just did, yeah, I just okay, turned 50. Okay, mine's in September. Okay, so, yeah. oh, my mom was born in September. She so, was born so was September mine. 19th, 1948. My mom's is September 10th. Hmm. Really? That's interesting. Okay. Let me ask you this. If I if I'm I want to sit here and talk to you because you're fascinating. <laughs> but but if I'm gonna but if I'm gonna uh, if I'm gonna go in there and pull it up and you're wanted by the FBI. I am wanted by the FBI. Okay, are you, are you are you right with me Mirandizing you? Can I get back here and you're wanted Too for something? 
Oscar, but renew your rights. If you if you want to buy it down, I can talk to you. Okay, awesome. Me up, please. I, but I got three questions I got to ask you that's on the form before I before I do that. Okay. The first one is: uh, Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol right now? No. Okay. I do drugs. All right. Um, the second one is: Can you read and write in English language? I can. Okay. And the third one is: How many years of school did you complete? Um, quite a few, actually. Okay. Yeah, high school, of course, and college here and there, and then more college here and there. I took my GED, I guess, how many times? Like three different times in class right. for each different name, like different okay. names those under. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah. And I obviously, obviously you, you went to some kind of uh, trade school, at least, or something. If you yeah, trade school, I did. I drove tractor and trailer for Schneider. That was back whenever they'd actually, like, put you up in a hotel for, like, I can't remember, it was, like, six weeks, and, like, put you through the training, paid training. Did you do that here locally? Or? I did that up in, uh, I was in Virginia, lived in Virginia at the time, and I went to, I think it was, was it Charlotte, North Carolina, is where I took the classes at for Schneider. They are, God bless them, you know, they paid you, you know what I mean? One of the benefits of allowing Kessler to lead the conversation is that she drops locations and the names of places she was enrolled or employed. This gives the police an easy way of tracking her, not only for evidence in this case, but to see if there are any other crimes she needs to be charged with. But I just, it's all in the, the dispatcher. She didn't give me good loads. I wasn't making money. So, I mean, I... My, my dad drove I, a truck for, for I, a few years. And, and it was always kind of his dream to, to be a truck driver. He was like, I want to see the nation. Yeah. He did it for four or five years and absolutely hated it. If they pay you well, it's more lovable. Yeah. It's all in the dispatcher and the loads. I mean, some people, they make marvelous money. But she just jerked my chain. And I'm like, <clears> I, I quit. And I went home and got a... Cocktail waitress job and made rent in a week. Whereas I'm like, rents do. I can't keep playing with this, you know. What I mean? yeah, yeah. So I went and slung beer and drinks and whatever in Virginia Beach, Virginia, hey, and made hey, rent. And that is my retirement job. I'm telling you, I'm you would make a great bartender. And I, and I want to be. And I want to work. be on the beach though. Ritz Carlton, Ritz Carlton, weddings, uh, banquet yeah, department, yeah. that'd be better. Yeah, because I, I, cause I like to just sit and talk to people. It's like, and people me, love you know, stories. I mean, you know, a good that. tale. And, 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 and the doctor's <laughs> like, but they do it with, the, I don't know about the, the, the women, but the, but the barber shop, you go to, and you know, people talk to their barber too. It's so yeah. funny how they'll, their bartender and their yeah. barber, they'll unload they're all kind of problems right. they won't tell anybody else to them. So I don't know if they get that with the, with the ladies at the, you know, salon. Or, or you may have Sometimes, been Sometimes, but I just, I don't know, I'll either try to cheer them or, you know, or it depends. Like, or I'll say, you know, I'm no expert, don't ask me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, not, I'm not trying to, because I'll, shh, don't count on me to help anybody with a problem. <laughs> I mean, I can give them advice, but that doesn't mean they should follow it. Let me read these to you real quick, and then I'm going to walk this out and let her, uh, let her see if you're playing a joke on me. Or no, not. I'm not. Okay. You'll see. All right. Print me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had your Miranda Rice written to you before? Yeah, of course. You'll written? see. Yeah, that's fine. Read to you before. Read to you before. To you before. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, I'm just sitting here to help them out. That's why. Yeah, that's fine. Out, you know? <laughs> okay. You have the right to remain silent. You do not have to make a statement or say anything. Anything you say can or will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to a lawyer and have a lawyer present with you during any questioning. And if you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, it won't be appointed to represent you at no cost before any question if you wish and you can decide to exercise these rights at any time and not answer questions or make any statements so if we come back and we start talking and at some point you decide you don't want to anymore you can say so okay no yeah okay fine. so you understand what I did? yes sir okay let me go drop this off I'll yay good job gentlemen we'll be back with you Kim. all right I'll be right here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna <laughs> wow Kim <laughs> I didn't lie well, I mean, she's still working on stuff, but she found this right away. Oh, is, that, is that you? Yeah, that's me. I was my younger man. Stop taking back and uh, <laughs> squint my eyes. <laughs> you know what? She wanted me to open my eyes there in Tennessee because they wanted to scan them, and I wouldn't open them. See how really? squinty my eyes are? The woman kept saying, what, open, your about your eyes. open your eyes. No, this, this one. one. Open your eyes. I was going to say, your eyes look good. Open your now. eyes. Is that a driver's license for them? Yep. Open your eyes. I wouldn't do it. I was like, kept them squinting until she finally gave in and took the picture. Because I didn't want my eyes scanned. It's not, um... That's me with short hair. It's not short saying hair. that you're wanted, though. It's just saying that you're a missing person. Why would you be wanted? No, 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 no. I have aliases. I have IDs. I was Christina Brooke whenever I had my son Evan Brooke. Well, I was you, Melissa McCormick. I am Kimberly Kessler. That's no, 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 no. But you said you're wanted. You've been running from the FBI. Wow. What are you? <sighs> so whenever they snatched my son, 
I um, went out and bought a gun. Okay. And whenever I went to visit my son, I planned on taking him. Mm -hmm. um, I never made it to see him. That he wasn't there anyways, and I got arrested for having a gun. Oh, uh, what state was that in? Virginia. And so, that's when another time whenever the, the run began. But I also was running, let's see, so in Arizona, I used the ID Melissa McKernan. Pull it up. It should come up. Melissa McKernan um, and went for the real estate license. And there you get fingerprinted. Well, I was fingerprinted once before as Kimberly Kessler for trouble I'd gotten into prior. So whenever it ran through, you know, they're like, I got in trouble. They were looking for me then. They're like, oh, we show you these fingerprints come up as Kimberly Kessler, but you say you're Melissa McKernan. I'm like, ah. So, <laughs> so it started. It just goes on and on. Now they, that's probably my mother saying I'm a missing person. I'm not missing. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Kessler can't give a concrete reason why she is wanted by the FBI. So far, all they can find out that she is a missing person, and that they are at a loss why she is presenting herself as some kind of a criminal mastermind. You know, well, like I said, she's, she's still looking, but, but immediately whenever she puts your real name in, this is what, this is what, this is the first thing that popped up. And I looked at it and I said, I can see the smile and I can kind of see it in the, in the, in the nose, especially in the black and white picture, because it's a little bit clearer than the, than the one on the right. Did you have red hair at one point in time? I did all sorts of things to my hair, of course. I'm a girl. I'm going to do that. <laughs> wow, wow. But like I said, I don't see where, as far as um, uh, them saying you're wanted anywhere. I mean, she can, I she can run it on father out. Now, you I am. I'm wanted in her. Arizona for, I guess, just fraud because I am Kim Kessler. And I'm just like, because of, of I to got the fingerprints. And I did get the license. Oh, okay. They issued it to me, and then later they came back with fingerprints. It, it took longer to run through in like the early 90s, it mm -hmm. took like months. So, maybe even longer than that. And then they came back and they're like, and the FBI, they actually, they, I don't know how I got the message, but I called him and he was like, I'm blah, 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 with the FBI. And I'm like, and he's like, um, are you Melissa McKernan? I'm like, yes. And he's like, well, I also show you as Kimberly Kessler. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, what did you do? And I couldn't remember all I could say. I think all I said was like, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. And I hung up on him. Mm -hmm. And then I had my boyfriend take me to the airport and I flew back to Virginia. Wow. That's well, what that. was the charge in Virginia? Do they have a carrying? Was it just Virginia's concealed Virginia's probably for what? the weapon thing, and then they're still trying to do something with it. They is, were is trying it to take, have a weapon in Virginia? Or just, I think probably whenever you're going to... You, I plan on taking my son back. That's I what I plan on doing. you out, or did you do time? I bonded out, out okay. so I never went back. Oh, uh, so yeah. you probably... That, you, too. You may, have a failure to, you may have a failure to appear then. Or something. That as well. Okay. But um, I was, I'm just very grateful that my son went with... A family member with his father right. because I was terrified of what they were going to do to him. I'm like, what? Why do you want my son? There, it made no sense. Believe, I mean, you may not believe me on that, whatever. But no, I'm talking, I, to I, me, as a mother, <laughs> I went. I'm like, take my son. So I'm like, Stop. You, you know, when, when we first started talking, I'm like, she's who? But, but no, I am. There's some. There's some you know, you know, and that I can't believe it. Come on, you can't pull me up. Do you need no, 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 no. They're 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 working on that. Yeah. It shouldn't take not, that long. It's a computer. It's 2018. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not we, we 1992. Had, we, I actually had to call our crime analyst back in. She was probably like, "It's Friday night again." Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, so uh, she's probably. Not happy with me right now. Sorry. No, it's not. No, no, it's all. I told them. She'll get paid, she'll get paid overtime. St. John's okay. ignored it. I'm like, okay. It Whenever is. I went before whoever, I told them, my name is. I've been running from the FBI forever. I think it, I said with him only 20 years, but it's longer than that. <coughs> was that the judge or one of the detectives down there? I don't know. Wherever they take you in before somebody. So I was with all these other people we stood, I guess, before a judge. I mean, but I said, my name is Kimberly Lee Kessler. My birthday, I've been running from the FBI for well, I appreciate you being honest with us. told him, and I think he just laughed at me. And he said something else, and told me to sit down. So. He probably, he probably <laughs> was like, you know, didn't believe it. He's probably thinking, you know, she's, because we get, you know, I've been this, this, you know. Pretty. I didn't erase it with acid. I, it crossed uh -huh. my mind. But I thought, how can I work with my hands all, like, I noticed when he asked you if you were, you know, under the influence of any type of drugs, you kind of had a disgusting look on your face. I, I assume there's no problems with, I, with you and drugs. Or? No, I feel bad for people who do drugs. I am grateful that I never got hooked on drugs. I didn't, I wasn't an experimenter with that. 
Um, but I just also, I just, I don't know, I don't have probably the empathy for people who do drugs that I probably should. Mm -hmm. Because friends of mine actually, I mean, a friend of mine, his wife, I think I already short shared the story. She got a car accident back in 2002, four, whatever, in her Jeep, hurt her back. They put her on prescription pain meds, and that's the end of her life, basically. She's hooked, yeah, she's, she's hooked on drugs. She has no job. They're worried about losing everything. Their 401k, their house, their everything. Over that, it's, so. it's, it's amazing. I, you know, I used to, and I'm probably. I might be running from the FBI, but I'm not hooked on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so. And I've seen it earned, you know. Like I said, I, mean, I used to know a lady that worked in a very professional business, made very, very good money, never been in trouble in her whole life. She got on the opioid pain medication for a legitimate reason. Yeah, the doctor. And, 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 and in three years, she went from a hundred plus thousand dollar a year job. To McDonald's been maybe? arrested yeah. twice uh, and then, uh, and then over, overdosed at work and died. Oh, because she was just probably so depressed. Yeah. It was it's so like, sad. It's just, yeah, it's, it's sad. And they don't have their really have their wits about them to control that. Like if I were on drugs, I would kill myself. Because you don't really, you know what I mean? You're just depressed and you just take it. Yeah. But I have my wits about me, so I'm like, I don't know, I'm too yeah. too mad. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it sounds like even though the, the, you know the, the trials and tribulations you've, you've been going through, at least the uh, at least that hasn't been. I try to keep a good sense of humor, and I try to be. You know, I mean, I try. I'm not trying to be disrespectful or rude right. or or uh, flippant. I'm not trying to be flippant. I'm just trying to keep it kind of real and light, but not. I'm not trying to be flippant. Kessler admits to lacking empathy for others and quickly shifts the focus of the conversation back to herself. Or sarcastic or anything. Yeah. You know, but I am trying to keep it light because I mean, it just helps. Them. It's oh. laugh or cry, man. Laugh or cry. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose to laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what do you, so, so what do you, what do you hope now? As far as I mean, you know, I mean, I am very grateful my son is alive and well. I was scared his whole life. I have been praying for that boy forever. I'm like, is he, I was, is he a good dad? How old is your son now? He's 20. His okay. his dad, he's alive, so I'm grateful. Okay. And I'm not trying to, God bless him. Yeah. The last words I spoke to his dad, I gave him that Volkswagen bug. Mm -hmm. He was talking about, I can't remember who he was talking about, but one of the last times I talked to him, and he said he sold me, got the money. And I'm like, did you get Evan? He said, no. I said, what? He, I said, did you get Evan? And he said, no. And I said, I gave you that Volkswagen to get Evan. I said, you better get Evan, so help me God, I'll kill you. And he got Evan, and then I never really talked to him again. He had Evan, and he raised him, and Evan's 20 years old now. I'm like, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. But Tim has, I think Tim's hooked on opioids. Cause he's What's Tim do? He works on Volkswagen Bugs. So oh, that's no. how I met him. So, um, but yeah, he, he did get Evan, you know, and I'd never talked to him that way before, so maybe it shocked him. <laughs> well, you, know, you know, it takes a, it takes a lot of... You know, and the inner, what really interests I me love. is, you, you I mean, you, you fascinate me, I'm glad to tell you, because this is like, you know, I'm like, I, I, mean, I love I'm, my I'm son, kind of I love guy. him, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful he's alive and well, I was so scared his whole life, you have no idea, his dad has his problems, and I'm not going to like say anything bad, I'm going to try not to say anything bad about him, because I'm very grateful that he went, and he got him, I'm very grateful. And he, and he held on to him and raised him. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So that for those alone, I'm just grateful. Oh, yeah. But and you were saying I interrupted you. No, no, no. I was just, I, I was just. To me, it's just, it's just. And I know, and I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't use the word interrupt. We're talking about your life, and I mean, there's, there's been struggles with it. But I'm just, and it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it's just. Uh, and, and to me, it takes a lot of guts to go. Okay. I'm at the point where... That's it. I'm 50 I'm, years I'm, old. This is I'm, it. I'm, I'm done. I'm tired. Because, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I have this conversation with people a lot, and they'll go, you know, after this, you know, because uh, you know, normally when I have somebody in here, they're, they're pretty serious struggling. They're like, this is it, you know. Um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come clean and turn it around. And, and, and honestly, um, one out of... A hundred is usually what I see that really make that decision. With you, you got you got to have a tremendous amount of touch report too, because you're like to to to, to do what you've been doing for the last twenty five years. And all you're strong. And yeah. it wasn't easy because my but, my childhood was. I mean, not to give the old childhood story, but my childhood was like my mom is something. Mm -hmm. She nearly killed me. That woman. Mm -hmm. She used to beat us until we stopped crying. Oh. So yeah, I can control tears. I can control tears to the point of extreme amounts of pain. Because yeah. that's what I've been, you know, that's how she does it. I've seen some horrible things, too, that she did. It was, like, really kind of mean. But um, at any rate, so that's how I was raised. So, um, Well, you know, 
Yeah. And I, I was I was an honor roll student. I went to high school up until like a month before I was supposed to graduate, and then something terrible befell me that I got. I never was expelled or got any. I not even, never even got detention. I was an honor roll student. I was a cheerleader, and but my mom started like acting crazy on me, and I started hanging out with the crowd that would take me in, which is the what they what we called back in the eighties. I graduated or would have graduated in eighty six. Mm -hmm. The burnout crowd because they you can their parents are lenient. My mom threw me out, they're like, yeah, yeah, you can crash over here. Heck yeah, I'm tired, it's cold, I have no yeah. coat, I gotta be in school. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I started, I dropped out all, all my higher classes, the calculus and all that, I dropped out of everything and took like what, stupid. What state were you in? Pennsylvania. 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 So I took the lower classes, home ec. You know, like stuff where you don't have to do homework or very rarely. You know, I took all the easy classes. I had everything I needed to graduate, I just needed to make it. So I took everything easy, lots of study halls. Because my mom was acting crazy, I'm like, so I can, you know, I, I didn't miss school, but I didn't have much required of me when I made it. Mm -hmm. So that was easier. You know, when I, my, my senior year in high school, I graduated in 86 as well. Of course, because we're the same uh, age. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and it was, and I had all the, I had all the required courses I, I needed except for one. I needed literature. What? And I had everything. And so, I took that in and, the and, so, and so my, uh, my senior year, I had, I had literature first period. The rest of the day, I was like, I had shop. I was, I was a coach's aide. I had, <laughs> I, had great I just had, I had, I had just totally. Why did you take easy classes? I, and, 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 and I loved it. It was a great senior year. But I got to tell you, when I went to college, I regretted it because, yeah. because I, I, you know, you I, had, I, it, I had never taken. And it sounds like weird so much. I was you know, nice. I, I, you know, we never had to have algebra to graduate when I graduated high school. I don't know if it was that kind of thing. But so we didn't have to have it here. And when I went to college, I'm telling you, the only class stand between me and my college degree is algebra because it just kicks my ass. It's not you know, bad. I, I, it's seventh just, grade algebra. Yeah. As Kessler recounts her past, one has to wonder how accurate her stories are. She has definitely exaggerated the FBI's interest in her and it is hard to tell if she is deliberately blowing things out of proportion or if she actually believes these things herself. In everything she says, there is probably a grain of truth, but only an investigation will be able to give the full picture. Algebra, 8th grade, Algebra 2, ninth grade, Geometry, and then I was supposed to be calculus 10th grade and that's when she started acting whack and I'm like come on I'm gonna drop this. That's what got me was math too. I'm, I'm I like math I'm that represents proud, uh, numbers, money. It's, yeah, <laughs> right. Some <laughs> people have a mathematical type brain and some people just, I don't, that's my opinion. I'm not, you know, and I can do normal math but. You I, can do it. Oh you just didn't gosh. want to. I, I you could have done, done it. You could have done it. Uh-uh. You could have done it. This is what I did in college because I ended up taking pre-calc, I guess, or whatever. And I, I would do the homework like two or three times, like do it over, write out, and again, until I like kind of memorized it, I guess, until I felt comfortable. I and then by the time I took the test, like I had all the whatever formulas kind of you know in my brain, so like I would get an A. And the kids, there were kids in the class way smarter. They had this IQ that was like like a nuclear bomb, right? Huge. And they were failing. I'm like, are you kidding me, jokers? Like, because it was, but I mean, it was just kind of like um, brute memorization, like repetition, mm -hmm. like writing something on the chalkboard like 50 times or 100 times, like just over and over. But it got me through it. So, I mean, if I can do it, I know you can do it. You just didn't well, feel like it. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. Well, I didn't feel like it. Because I went <laughs> in high school when I was younger, and, and you know, it would have, uh, you know, they say when you're younger, it's a little easier to learn. I don't know if that's true or not. But, and but always get a tutor. But, yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm going to go back and, and kick that algebra ass <laughs> one day. It's, it's on my bucket list to uh, well, finish, finish that right I would have had to graduate out. in summer school. But uh, I'm a summer school graduate. Good for you. But, uh, you know, uh, you know and, and, and you talk about, you know, tired of running and, and turning things around. Uh, you know, it sounds like to me if anybody could do it, you know, you could probably. What's the next chapter for you? I, mean, what's... I don't even know. I am so grateful my son is alive and well. You don't have any idea. I, I'm so scared. His dad, he, no one's perfect, right? So I don't know. We all have our whatever. I heard some stories I could probably tell, but he told me that with his sister-in-law that I couldn't believe it. And I saw it on the news later. Whoa, curl some hair. I might hold that back for the FBI. Unbelievable, because after I saw it, years later because I don't have a TV and I see it on the internet or whatever and I'm like I remember him telling me about that they really did that oh my 
God. Did you ever have that? Well, you may have some stuff that you can help out with that, that can help you with the situations you're in. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm grateful my son's alive and well. I'm so grateful. So grateful. And, and his Are dad, you, one you, of the things his dad did whenever Evan was like three months old, and I don't even know why. I think he was on drugs. He always said he wasn't, but he acted so wild. And, and Your I'm son's name is Evan, right? Ev, yes, Evan, and his dad's name's Tim. Okay. Tim Timothy Everett Edwards, and Evan's name is Evan Everett Brook, and I was going by Christina Brook at the time. So, at any rate, his dad took us, and he was just acting kind of crazy, and he's like, give me Evan. It was at night, and I'm like, for what? Like, he was never even interested in the baby before. It's like 9 o'clock at night. I'm like, for what? He's like, give me the baby. I'm like, for what? And he goes to like grab him, and I'm like, he's three months old. You can't wrestle over a three month old. They're fragile. Yeah. I'm like, what? And he just took his head and like pushed it up. And I didn't want to like resist because it's the baby. Right. And he pushed his head into my head, not very hard, but it made him cry. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like he just did that. And I was, it was the only thing that he ever did that, you know, was like nasty. But I'm like, I'm going to call the police. You need to go. What is wrong with you? And he was just kind of... But, but here's, the th here's the thing. A lot, Evan's alive and well. He didn't kill him. Do you plan on trying to reconcile with Evan? What's I, that's what's my saying? baby. That's my son. That's my right. only when, when child. Time was he was a baby. I don't know, got, 14 got, months, 15 months. I, mean, I have pictures on the iPhone of him. Um, a couple of them that I found on the internet. So... But yeah, I haven't seen him since he was a baby. You, I'm need, great. you need to go see him. I, now, every kid, let me tell you something. He I go knows, by and see my mom almost every him. day. I, I know he does, but listen, I go by and see my mom almost every day after work because my dad turned 84 this year. Uh, his health is not good. Mm -hmm. My mom uh, is, she will be 78 this year and she's I just beginning so. to slow down. But I'm like, I try to go by and see them every day after work if I can and I can't always do it because I'm like you know I'm running out of time to go by and see them you know especially with my dad you know and uh you know so I always try to and so I mean, you, yeah. you, you need to try to you need to try to see him and I mean I, I, know, I know there's a lot of shit going on in your life but she Kessler only seems to really care about her son in a relationship to herself but that is consistent with the way she views other people in general what else is new? I'm yeah. used to it now. My dad passed away when I was young, and that was one of the hardest things. I wish if I could go back in time, that's one thing. If I could change it, I would. I'd somehow save him. He died right before I turned 21, so I was 20. Um, at the time, I was, let's see, I was working in a restaurant, but before that, I was bartending for a while. But um, I ended up having to settle that. He, my mom divorced him right before he died, and he loved that woman. She's not a nice woman, okay? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Uh, I had to settle the estate myself, bury him myself. I had never done any of that before. I love my dad. I hyperventilated and cried for over a year. <laughs> I was I'm, like, I'm going to be in a basket case. And I'll tell you, I have dealt with death my whole career. And I've told, had the unfortunate opportunity to tell 100 people that or more that their loved ones are gone. And, and I can do it because it's my job. But when it comes down to, you know, I, hear, I see other people, people all the time. It's like, I say, and they're like, are you going to speak at your dad's funeral? I'm like, are you kidding me? I won't be able to hold my head up, you know, yeah. uh, or, or my mother for that, for that, you know, matter. I just, you know, but you need to, and I'm oh, sorry, I'm not yeah. trying to give you advice. No, no, but no, I'm no, just no. Saying, I, I I'm want just telling you, when it comes to family, to. I'm all about, you know, um, and, and I'm fortunate because it sounds like you had some, some problems with I family, but I, I, you know, we, we didn't have money, but. I was yeah, truly blessed that I mean, my, my, mom, my mom and dad are, you know, great parents. You know, we didn't we didn't have name brand, but we but we had clothes and we had they food. They were clean. And, and it didn't yeah. matter how many jobs they had to work to make it happen. Uh -huh. you know? Have you talked to Evan? No, no. Uh -uh. I haven't, he hasn't seen me and I haven't seen him since he was a baby. So, um, no. And he's, who knows what his dad put in his head, you know what I mean? So. Here's the deal, in, in 2015, after I got my cosmetology license in 2014, I rode, I didn't have a car yet, I just had my motorcycle, up to North Carolina, rode my Come motorcycle. Up, sorry, yeah. Hold on, I'll answer maybe 20 more questions. <laughs> okay. Let me tell my little story that is boring to okay. you, sorry. So um, I went up there and, and I planned on seeing him. 
I wanted to see him. I wanted to somehow like get a job in a barbershop or Great Clips nearby and you know maybe somehow get involved in his life. But I ended up, that's when I broke my leg and then I ended up having to go up to you know uh, Minnesota because they have free health insurance and then I came back to Florida because I couldn't afford, like I tried North Carolina again but their, the state income tax is too much and I had a car at the time to live in but <laughs> Uh, it just, it's just too hard. It's just way too hard. But I was hoping to somehow get involved in his life. But, you it's know. It's not too late. Well, now I'm like, okay, I'm on the map again. I'm on the grid. Hi. <laughs> I'm not going to do it discreetly as, you know, Speaking Jennifer or whatever. But. Speaking of on the map, do you know why, why you're here? Um, yes, I'm being accused. Uh, you accused me the other night of, uh, you you're like, where's Jolene at? So, and, and I do not know where she is. After nearly an hour, Kessler is finally asked if she knows why she's being interviewed. When she answers that she does, she tries to sound shocked by the accusation against her. Because that's, you know, and, and the other night, and I think I apologized to you the other night because, you know, I just, when I talk to you and tell you that, that family means a lot to me, um, you know, a couple days ago I met Jolene's two sons, and I mean, they were literally, I mean, they were, I, I call it, and it, it's probably not the best term to use because people will look at it and go, that's kind of a prejudice statement, and I don't mean it that way, but, you know, my mom, when I was a kid, she'd say, stop running around like a wild Indian. I mean, that's what it reminded me of, because her two little kids were just, literally, I'm standing there, and one of them's running between my legs, <laughs> just running around, and they're, and they're all over the floor, and I'm like, you know, they were, they, they were running around like wild Indians, I don't think that's a good thing anymore. And uh, it was just, you know, it just, it broke my heart because I was like, you know, um, where is she? It's, you know, she had been reported missing. They said, you know, there's no way that she's not going to be with her kids. And so I probably come across harsh when I talked to you the other day. And for that, you know, I didn't, I didn't mean anything by it. But like I said, I want to know, I want to be able to find her and I want to be able to get her back with her little boys. Just like, you need to go and be with Evan. She needs to be with her with her kids, okay? Um, so, again, if I come across, uh, you know... You're I, just I'm doing not, your job. I but, but it's more, it, it is my job, but at the same time, I try not to let your, you know, in my job, you try not to let your emotions get involved, but sometimes, even, I've been doing it for 21 years, sometimes I let things get to me that I shouldn't let, you know, let get to me, and at least until later on when I'm not trying to have a conversation with somebody. Well, you, know, you, you kind of put those things to the side and you worry about them later, and maybe I didn't do a good job of that when I started talking to you. You're tonight. fine. Um, feelings are just kind of a funny thing, because I was raised by kind of stout German people that are like, suck it up, you don't show feelings, I'll beat you until you stop crying. So we're like, we finally learned. It only took a couple beatings, we're like, okay, yeah. we got this under control. But feelings are like a funny thing because you gotta somehow deal with them and I've never really quite figured that one out. Like, where do you stuff them? Well, I stuff them in different places, and I end up stuffing my face because I'm going to do some, something wrong to, like, try to quelch that. Because we all have, you know, feelings that are positive. Not everyone's happy. I mean, we all have things in our life, you know? So, and I stuff it with food, which is not good. And other people do it with drugs and alcohol or whatever. The, the right way to do it is, like, going to the gym. Yeah, or, you know, <laughs> I like to go uh, camp or hike, and, and it's like, if I can... I, I say that I don't like, I like to be alone for short periods. I couldn't do it for, for 25 years, but to me, nothing's better than a three day in the woods right by myself, me and nothing but a campfire and a canoe or something like that. Um, Squirrels so, and birds yeah, and yeah. Yeah, but critters. Is there, is, you know, and again, you know, can we, I don't think we talked much about it the other night because, like I said, I probably didn't handle it as professional as I should have, but can we just go through when you work with her on that Saturday so I can, is there anything you can tell me that? Did she ever talk to you about a, a boyfriend? Uh, she I, know she, I know she's had a husband. I know she had a boyfriend. Did she ever talk about anybody she was scared of? She, she, did she ever say anything that would that she wanted to run away and get away from it all? I mean, you know. I don't remember hearing anything. She would have different conversations sometimes with different clients because different clients you don't tell every client. You know what I mean? Like, but the one client that what was it? The one I want. The one I told you, what was it? She she I, was saying CPS came to her house. She was telling one client that I caught a little blip of it in between listening to YouTube and the phone ringing, and 
And she, I remember hearing her say she thought her, her ex-husband or her husband was doing to get out of paying child support. That's all I heard, and I don't remember ever hearing about a boyfriend ever. But then again, I don't always really pay attention. And as I told you before, Miss Ann, she really like talked to Miss Ann. Like her and Miss Ann would go out back and they smoke cigarettes together. They sit out back sometimes for a while, and they would even forget that their clients were. And I'd have to go in the back and be like, "Hey, your clients are here," because they would get so involved and talk. So I don't know as much as, you know, maybe Miss Ann, and honestly, whenever I first started, she would tell me, you know, I don't even remember what, she started to tell me some things, and I would be like, I am not the person that asked, I can't give you any good counsel. Now, did she tell you who she was hanging around with, or was no. she in anything that maybe she shouldn't have been she in? She would just or? say to me, like, you know, the time or two that she'd say, I'm just going home and having a quiet night at home, or like, I don't have the kids tonight, or, you know, whatever, I'm just going to enjoy this, and I'd be like, you're young, why don't you go out? She's like, no, I don't need a man in my life. But here she had a boyfriend, I didn't even know that. Was so. she involved in any bad habits or anything that could get her in trouble? Um, I I can't say that it, that she did, but I did find a bag that I believe had crystal meth in it, just a little bit in the bottom, a tiny baggie back by the back door. Um, at first I thought, well, maybe it's... Val, uh, Vicky's daughter, uh, whatever her name is, Whitney, you know, because I heard she had a drug habit, but hers is opiate, and that's not crystal meth. So, and I didn't even know what it was at first. And it was actually Jolene who said, that's a drug baggie. And I'm like, really? She said, yeah, that's drugs. She goes, do you know what kind of drugs it is? I said, I don't know. I don't know. It could be bath salts. It looked kind of like crystals. And um, she, I ended up looking up on the internet, and I believe it was crystal meth. How much was on just a little bit in the bottom, but enough. Gessler plants the idea that Cummings was using drugs, possibly in a bid to make the victim seem unreliable or to take the focus off of Kessler. As you can see, it was crystals, and I'm like, and then as I started watching YouTube videos and trying to get myself educated on drugs, you know, the, the behaviors and so forth, I'm like, well, maybe it was Jolene's, but at first I didn't think it was hers. I thought it was maybe uh, Vicky's daughter, Whitney, because Whitney has a drug problem, but I didn't know exactly what at the time. I and then later I found out it's Whitney likes opiates and heroin. She doesn't, you know, did I don't you guys, know. Did you guys ever <laughs> hang out after work? Did you ever go anywhere no. together? Okay. Um, is she ever allowed to use your car? Are you allowed to use her car? Did you ever go anywhere together like that? No. But you asked me all that before and answered before. So. Uh, okay. I was, That's not, all right. <clears throat> I mean, I think, sure. I think when, when mm -hmm. we were, um, the charge you were arrested on is a grand theft auto charge. You knew that, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and that was kind of what I was talking with you about the other day. Um, and the reason you're charged with that is because whenever we talked about that, um, there's video of you dropping her car off at the Home Depot parking lot there in Yulee and walking across and going into the uh, yeah. gate station and getting a taxi cab back down to, uh, they had it listed as Dick Swain's, but it was back down there to where Tangles is, okay? And that's why you're, you, you know, you're charged with a grand theft auto. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to trick you, I'm not trying to fool you. You're opening up to me and I'm opening up to you, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the reason you're charged with that. You're not charged with anything else, okay? Um, but something happened to Jolene. And, you know, we actually sent our, sent our crime scene unit out to process um, tangles. And there was some evidence there, okay? We have also, and, and I don't want you to think I've been fooling you, I, you know, I just want to talk to you and get to know you a little bit because I think something, was there, that, was some, some, something, something that, that you didn't plan happened, but let me tell you what, what we did, okay? Because I just want to be honest with you because I think something bad happened that you didn't intend to happen, but um, uh, we have, you know, taking a look at your car and we actually, and we, we went out and um, uh, went to your storage unit on the island. And we did that all on a legal basis. We had the search warrants going on, okay. Um, we've got the, the video of you at the, when you go in and buy a bottle of water, you bought it on your credit card. Uh, you paid for the, uh, for the cab on your credit card. Uh, you used the clerk's phone to make the phone call to the, car, to the cab company. Um, we also have recovered 
your shoes that has Jolene's blood on your shoes. So I just want you to, if something happened that you didn't intend to happen, I want to talk to you about it. I don't think you're an evil person. I don't think you're a mean person. I think you have done one hell of a job getting through the last 25 years. Um, and I just want you to be honest with me. You're ready to make a new start. You're ready to start over. You're I don't think there's really any new start. I mean, I'm, uh, my life, I'm 50 years old. I don't really see, I don't see anything foreseeable great there's, there's, in my life. <laughs> I, mean, well, I give up, man. Well, I give up. I'll keep breathing and praying, and that's about it. Well, let me say, let me, I am let, tired. Let me put it to you this way. I don't see right? anything panning out. No. But listen, but listen to me. You know, I get it. And I I would probably I would probably I would probably agree with you as far as you know that dream life that everybody's gonna have is probably oh, at fifty that? years old with everything that you've been through is probably not gonna happen. No. But I'll tell you what else I what I, what I do believe and, I, and I'm being sincere about this you know because I've seen people that that I've sit in here and talked to and like I said only one out of a hundred usually. I'll see them three or four years later and they'll go, you know, things are great, things are much better. I haven't been in any trouble, I, I've turned things around. Um, but I have seen a lot of people that uh, when they come in here and we first start talking, they're carrying a big, big, heavy burden. And you've been carrying not just, hmm. I think, what recently happened, you've been carrying some other burdens. From what you're telling me, you know, I don't, I don't see where you want it anywhere else, but... Oh, I am. As they list the evidence against her, Kessler becomes quiet the flow of endless chatter suddenly drying up. When she does speak, she focuses on anything but the actual crime itself. I can't believe it, it hasn't like come the, up the, yet. The, the computer's the, the, really that slow. But I've seen it. I, they may have it in there. She, she may have it, but I just I want to talk to you. I want to keep up and keep, keep leaving. Um, so, so she may very well have that now. Um, but I've seen people when they finally go, okay, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being something I'm not. And, you know, even if it means that they're going to have to make some more sacrifices and some bad stuff's going to come towards them, just the weight off their shoulders. I mean, I, there's sometimes I sit here and you can literally see them just kind of go, and it's like, I'm, I'm ready to tell the truth. I'm ready to do this, you know. And I don't think you're bad. I don't think you're evil. I think some, and I got to tell you, we've talked to the, we've talked to the uh, owner of the business and I know that she was kind of, uh, said something, some negative things to you that day. She said that she thought you were fake. She thought you were phony and she was going to look you up. And, uh, you know. I don't remember any of that. Okay. That's what I was told. That's what, uh, what's the name of the lady that, uh, she's got the heart issue that owns the, uh, uh Vicky. 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 Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was not Vicky. It was. It was. Um, I said that wrong. I apologize. There's a. There's a. Uh, a uh, uh, Asian woman that works there a couple of days a week. Yeah, she, she was there. She was Ann. She was there that day. I apologize. Yeah. It was not the owner. She said that that, that there was uh, not so much altercation, but just that uh, there was some tension with you guys that last day. And she said that that's what Jolene told you. That you know, she said she overheard that. Um, but Did an accident happen between y'all? I mean, hey, I think Jolene's dead, and I think you know where Jolene is, and I want to. I don't want to go tell her 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 ex. You know, I know that she didn't have a great relationship with her ex, but I know she loved those two boys. I don't want to uh, them to. I, I dread the the point, but it's going to happen. I'm going to have to. Tell them that their mom is gone. Okay, and we, and uh, we need to know where. But, she's but I need to. I need to at least let them be able to give them give her a proper. Right. If she she's out there somewhere. Her body's out there somewhere. Let us get her buried properly or whatever whatever final arrangements they need to take care of. I, you know, I, I just want you to think about it for a minute. Um, we're we're, we're going to find out what happened. I don't mean that in a threat. I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, I've been here for four days, almost, you know, 16, 18 hours a day, because I'm going to find out where the, those little boys' mama is. I promise you I'm going to do that. You can help me do that, and you're the one that can make it happen right now.
No, I cannot. And I'm not, again, whatever fury may come, I... How does her blood on your shoes? How does her blood get on your shoes? On your, on your, on your, on so your let shoes. me reply this way, and you may not like the answer. I would like legal counsel. I haven't been able to call anybody. I haven't been able to call my mom, and I see how that works. And that, that, that may still continue to go on. I may not be able to call anybody. You just stick me in jail, and I'll just sit there, and I can't call anybody, and on and I, on we go. I That's fine. I can't speak for what, you know, when you were held down. I couldn't down. call I anybody. Make a phone I call couldn't me. call my mom. I couldn't call anybody. Nothing. I can assure you when you get to our facility, we, we will uphold the letter of law as far as whatever the policy is and whatever legal and rights and I don't, you have, okay. your those will be upheld. Well, they weren't so far, so I don't really even expect them to be. That's what I saw down there. They didn't pay attention to me. That's fine. I just, I'm expecting that that's what will, I heard that Southern jails, that's what happened. So I'm like, I'm that's perfectly not, expecting it to be really bad. That's not, so, not going to happen here, I promise you that. Virginia um, Beach. So do, do, you, do you not want to? Uh, <laughs> it was. <laughs> let, let me clarify. Do you, not want to talk to me? do you not want to talk to me without leaving the house? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Do you need a drink of water? Or do you need to go to the bathroom? No. Thank you. Okay. Um, you're not going to be mistreated at this facility. You will get. You will get. They will. They will abide by your constitutional rights. Uh, if you change your mind, and you know, you're going to get an attorney. Um, but if you change your mind and want to talk to me, I'm going to reunite those boys if it's nothing but with their mother's body. I know that's a sin. I know she's dead. Okay? All right. If you need something, just knock on the door. We'll let you go to the restroom or, or, or get some water, whatever you want, okay? All right, I'm good. Thank you. Kessler exercises her right to speak with legal counsel, and the interview draws to an abrupt close. Authorities subsequently obtained surveillance footage which showed Kessler carrying heavy trash bags to a dumpster behind Tangle's hair salon after it closed on the night of May 12th. It was later emptied by a garbage truck. Its contents never retrieved. That night, Kessler was captured on security cameras at Walmart purchasing cleaning supplies, gloves, and an electric carving knife. She then returned to the salon and continued to fill the dumpster out back with large, full trash bags. Kimberly Kessler was charged with first-degree murder. In the lead-up to her murder trial, she went on a hunger strike in an attempt to show that she was incompetent for trial. While in custody, Kessler was also charged with two counts of battery on a law enforcement officer after stripping nude and flinging feces at them. In December 2021, she was found guilty of first-degree murder in the death of Jolene Cummings and subsequently sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The body of Jolene Cummings is yet to be found. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon link in the description below and drop a like on this video. Also, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm always curious to read what you thought of the case.